session here we're going to talk about several different techniques for polygon modeling. Um, we're going to start by just kind of overview of what we covered in the previous course um, and that's just kind of the basic polygon modeling tools and we'll look at some more of these tools inside of XSI. We'll also look at curve based modeling where we can use some of the curve tools, create curves and then build polygons by creating the polygons from the actual curves. So you've got here poly mesh and we've got several tools to build polygons from curves. You can also build surface meshes from curves as well. Then we'll finally we'll look at deformers and these are several tools you can use to change the shape of an object such as a lattice or known as freeform deform in some packages. So that's what we're going to cover. So just kind of a view, if I go back and open the scene here and we're going to open up one of the um, Alley scenes. So, not this one here. And just as before, we can, um, some of these objects actually reference objects. So, if we go to Explorer, we look at this one here, open up the reference, we can see that we can go to the higher resolution reference level we created previously. So any of these objects we could go in and we could export out, create a new object, replace it in and import it back in as a reference object just using standard tools. So for example we have change this to an actual dumpster and we actually have some good dumpster reference. Same idea, I often like to use my blocking as a way of getting the right size and position so we'll just take this object here and we'll just export it out using file export model and we'll call this dumpster okay that should be fine and when you actually export a model out it does actually make this object into a model so even though it's not a model yet when we import that back in it will be a model now we we'll just go here and go to a new scene it's always best to work in new scenes when creating and we can go file import model and we'll see the dumpster emdl for some model format. Currently it's not in a good position and rotation for modeling and we can see right now it has some position and rotation already on it. Um, I can go in and reset these so it's easier for me to build just by picking the object here. So either we can pick the object and reset the transformations, transformation, reset. You could also stick a keyframe if you want to get back in that position but I know roughly where it's going to go, so that's okay. The other option we have as well is leave this where it is and make a new object and then reposition the new object back into here. That's the other option. And that's what we'll actually go ahead and do. So we'll start with a primitive cube, just as we would before, and we can scale this down. Let's bring the size down a little bit so we get roughly the same proportions of this one. I'm not too worried because I'm actually going to replace it. You can use as before the temporary pivot, so it goes to the move tool. That's v, v is a hotkey, hold alt down, just snap in the corner. And then we can actually hold control down if grid snap was turned on. Just turn grid snap on control and just kind of grid snap that into the center. And then we can scale it if we need to, X, scale it out a bit to get some of the proportions in here. We can now bring in some rotoscope view. So we go rotoscope. And we can bring in some reference images we have. So here we go here. New from file. And we can look in our different folders to see what reference we have. And actually it's not in there. So let me go back up one. Just check I may have it in one of my course folders. Okay. So we'll go back up to my desktop, just turn the thumbnails off for the moment. And I did have some favorites, so desktop is a favorite here. And we can see what reference we have. And there should be some dumpster reference in here. And if not, I'll put it somewhere else. I'm just going to pause the video for a second and find that. 
Okay, so I have basically images, they're actually on the, my external hard drive, so I've just copied them into my project folder. And again, if we go to Rotoscope, we go here, oops, to Rotoscope View, and Rotoscope Options, and we'll just go in and pick the image, New, from File, and we can see here I've got my front image. These haven't been ideally cropped, um, but I can go in here and adjust them just using the Rotoscope option. So we can go in here and you can, there's different options for the image and we can go here to a couple of options. So we've got the width and the height here to adjust the size of it. So you can see how we can scale this down to get a better size to fit our object. Um, we can also move this around to center it. And you can hold shift down to make it again more sensitive. So we go in, get those positions roughly in the right place. This image also isn't 100% straight and I should have done this inside Photoshop it just happens I haven't currently got Photoshop on this machine. Um, so you can do some more options of the image. You can actually crop the image. So you can see I have this image right now, it's not fully located. You go right mouse and crop tool if this doesn't work, just hit B. It's a little bit of a um, quirk sometimes with the crop tool. And we can actually crop this, yes, loading the memory. And we can just drag here and crop the image. And you'll see it actually cropped here. So I cropped out that white border. It's quite nice to be able to do, you know, in pretty much real time. Just going to scale that a touch more. And move it up a little bit more. To get that located touch better. Um, also this one's okay but the other image we'll notice is going to need to be rotated so if you need more stuff to the image than just cropping you can go to clip properties and there are some more options here so we've got general adjust that's kind of colors if the image is too bright too dark you can actually dim it down just undo that control Z. Transform is really interesting here we can actually adjust um, the cropping size and also resize this as well and I was just looking if there's actually any kind of rotation there isn't so if you actually need to rotate it you need to rotate that inside of um, inside of XSI or so inside of a 2D package such as Photoshop so there are a few options you have to kind of tweak the image a little bit if you need you can flip it as well. So the side image we'll notice we bring this one indefinitely need some work. And another option is to bring these into planes, but I'll just bring this in and sometimes I use these as general reference as well. So not here's our side image. Bring that in. See it there. Again needs to be scaled down. And you know, often I'll look at these kind of side by side. So it's roughly two squares in size for the height. And if it stops getting down, just use the the other value to get it. Then we just bring it a bit too much. Hold shift down, make the slider more sensitive, and we can get that there, just a touch bigger. and that should be pretty good so again this one ideally would be rotated but I can still get the rough idea where things are without rotating it move this back a bit in the z-axis to get this lined up better and again we'll do some cropping so we'll go on the image hit B and just crop this yes and just crop that so we get rid of the extra white area we really don't need to look at you know, when they cropped it, it actually resized it a bit, so you actually have to go in and get this, you know, back into scale. And position. Uh, 
Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, so we can just quickly go through some of the polygon tools once we have this set up. We'll start with front window and we'll just get this roughly positioned into the size I want to be. You know, there is quite a lot of perspective shift here, so, you know, we don't worry too much about, and again here, we'll just scale this one up to get roughly the shape. And then we'll just start quickly modeling this again, some of the tools you'd used last time. Um, one area, of course, is some of the detail here. So I'm just going to start by splitting with the poly mesh split edge tool, which is a square bracket, and just just use one side as your reference because it's rotated. I'm only looking at roughly one side to get the position. So we're quickly going in here and getting the reference where we need it. So we're just going to quickly go in here and just put some areas that we'll be able to use quite quickly eventually to use extruding, extrude some of these areas out. So what we can actually do now is extrude this and then what we're going to do is going to kind of snap some areas back to make it more interesting. So we're just going to pick U is a hotkey to pick faces, which is pick these faces here. And we're probably going to need a few more faces just looking at this. So I'm just going to add some more splits in. You know, when I do add some more splits, it doesn't actually remove faces. So when we go back to you, we can hold shift down and add a couple of extra faces there. Now, I should have done both sides, but we'll do one side, we can always mirror that across later on. And I'll show you how you can do that with some of the other tools. So, Control D, and we'll just bring those out a bit to get that detail in here. Just framed in here, just going to spin the camera around a bit. And we can see to shade it. Now, to get some of the detail in here, you see how these kind of came back a bit. We're just going to use some of the move point tool and do a target weld. So we're just going to weld some of these back down. And what you'll get here, so move the camera a bit more, is you'll get roughly that look you want to create. I can hit F12, that will go full screen. It's easier for me to see what I'm doing here. And that will give you more of that look you have with these. Now you see these came out a bit, so we'll just go in, tag some points. So we'll just tag those who are again holding shift, we can move those out a bit. Now what I'd actually probably like to do is keep the everything kind of even. So what I'd instead of tagging just these two points, what I'd probably do is select the ones at the bottom as well. So just hold T down, take those two, hold down shift and T and take these two and then just move all of them, the move tool, across to get better a better style and look to this. So that's roughly the look we have here. Now it looks like all of these here came down together. So again um if we look this kind of comes straight across here and we probably want that to come all the way back. So a yeah, lot of bit of a tweak here to make that work better. I can actually just move this edge and align this edge or create another edge and kind of flatten it out. So whichever you find is better. Or we could just say this is a slightly different design. It's not really the answer. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and create another couple of edges inside here and kind of put all this together. 
So the easiest way in that case is first of all use the move point. So just kind of weld those together with the target well turned on. Oops, that's the wrong point. So undo that. I'm going to do it in the screen here so I actually do get the right points. Okay, so I've just brought those together now. And and that actually works fairly well. We have a bit of an end gone here that ideally I'd want to clean up because that's not you know a great polygon there. So in that case we can just go in and there's other tools here. There's the split edge tool um and the add edge tool. We use an add edge, we'll just add and you can hold different keys down. Shift will keep it straight. But it's really useful for going in and then right mouse button and end it to go all the way down. So we added that in here just to kind of clean up that geometry a bit better and keep maintain our edge loops. We could do the same back here as well if we want to. And these will probably come out a bit further, but it's actually okay in that case. So anyway, I will we can keep modeling this, keep adding detail if you wanted to. I'm not going to spend too much time because these are a lot of the tools we have seen before. Um, so I just want to kind of go through this process of extruding. But what I will do is I'll just go here and cut this whole object in half. So we use the split edge tool. And if you hold control down, it will actually split across the middle. Actually, you can hold the middle mouse. So control, the middle mouse will split down the middle. And then we can just select the whole half of the object, delete it, pick the object. Now we ideally want the center to be in the middle. If we look at the center position, you can see that by just going to move tool, you can see it is in the middle. Uh, no, if it's not, we can move the center with some of the move center tools. So if the center wasn't in the middle, let's just move the center so it's not in the middle. The easiest way to get it lined up is just tag points along the middle axis and just use the transform move center to vertices and move the center to the center of those selected vertices. Now you'll see the move tool now the center is in the right place. Um, when we use this tool here the symmetrize polygons it will symmetrize that across an axis and you can do either global or use its current center and local and symmetrize it across to get the other half made. And of course I could keep going here and adding more detail with more of the tools, but since I have a more interesting project to work with the other tools, I'm going to switch over to that. So in this case, we want to just get this back into position of our original kind of low res one. That's there's low res one. So what we'll do in this case is just pick this here and we want to position that into here. Right now, this was a cube that was scaled from its original position. So I'm just going to take this one here and just match the position. So transform and you can match the scaling, rotation or translation. I'm going to match the translation to this one. And you can see now it's and then we can also match the rotation. To this one. Now you'll notice the rotation is actually offset by 90 degrees. So we just pick this one and under Y rotation we just go Plus, whoops, let's make sure I hit the right key. Okay, um, plus 90, and now we we'll add 90 degrees. You can do plus 90, minus 90, divided by 2. There's lots of things you can do, and that positions it now into the right position. Or, oops, actually, I did that wrong. Maybe it was 90. Plus, there we are, 90 plus, sorry, wrong way around. Now we can see that is matched into the position. So you could do 90 plus, if you want to have that divided by 2, you could do 2 divide, and then it would divide by 2. So we just did 90 plus to change that. Let's close that down. We'll delete the original here. Well, first of all, we'll just get this scaled a bit better into position. You want to make sure it's matched fairly closely 
to the original. I want to make sure it's not going through the ground. And we may need to move it touch. That looks good. We'll delete this one here. Pick this one and make sure it's under the, that new group. So we'll just drag it under the dumpster here. And then we just take this one. File, export, model. Make sure we've got the entire model picked this time. So we just middle mouse the model node. Okay, all right, mouse model node, whichever you prefer. File, export, model. We'll give this a slightly different name. Dumpster high. It's not really high, but you get the idea. And then we can for open up our scene. That would be on the recent scenes. And we can actually delete this one and bring in the model. So we'll just delete that one. File, input model, just as we did before. We've got the dumpster here. There's the dumpster. And you can also do reference models. So right now, this is just imported as a local model. If we undid that, we can do import. So what was it? Import reference model, and then we can bring in this one first. The difference is it's stored externally. So there's our reference model here. We can pick the model node, and then we can add a resolution to it. So add a resolution, and then we can bring another one in. So and we'll go there for the high res bring that one in and then we can switch over the high res and you can see switching the resolutions okay so same idea now we're going to go and do something more interesting use a lot more of the tools and make it a lot more fun last we're going to go ahead and build this truck model this was um, roughly a day's worth of work um, and what we're going to do is just kind of start by building the cab section and talk about the best way to do this. And it's built out of several curves and the curves have been remodeled to create polygons and um, those polygons have been smoothed with subdivision. You can see here if I go up some subdivision levels it's the um, less detail so we go here and you can see some of the detail will increase and decrease depending on the level so most of this actually at the zero degree subdivision level right now so let's go ahead and model this or at least a part of it so what I did was start with I'm just going to get a recent scene here And we started by bringing in the images into a rotoscope view. And what you can do here is work in several ways. Either you could block out the model just using standard box modeling techniques by taking polygons and extruding them just as standard way I've done in the past. Or you can build a series of curves and use those curves to construct a surface. And that's what we're going to do here by drawing a CV curve and just kind of blocking out parts of the truck. So we'll start here. And you want to use not too many points. Um, most of my curves I use anything from six to eight points to define the shape. Of course, once you're done, you can move the points. If you use the M tool, it goes to the Move Point tool. But um, a slightly different tool it has little tangent handles and certain areas you can work with. You can use that tool if you want. If you prefer the standard Move tool, just go Move Point tool. And this is your standard move point tool that you'll use to do the tweak tool when it comes to polygons. So we've got one curve here defined. We'll go to the next one here and get some more curves. And you see this curve is in the wrong position right now, so we'll just move that curve out to the side so it lines up in one of the windows. There we are. So trying to get these curves lined up in several views. Do another curve. This curve would use for this section here. So we'll just go down. 
I'm not going to worry right now about going all the way to the front and getting with move that curve out. This curve will need to be rotated a bit. So go in here, use the Alt Pivot, and move the pivot to the top. Right now it's hard to move it this way, so I just Alt, snap it to the top there, and then rotate it out a little bit to get the shape that's better. This will probably only have to come down to the section here. We could cut the curve if we need to, but using different tools. So the idea is you keep going in, building up, just do a curve for this segment along here. So this would be, let's say, from here. Let's put too many points, I'm just going to undo a few of those points here and just do less points. Often less points are better. Because you can always add detail, putting too much detail in the beginning. It's always a bad thing. And this curve here, we're going to shorten by taking the curve and just tagging some points and just hitting the delete key to delete them. And we may need to move that last point down a bit just to get the right proportions. Again, this curve here is in the wrong place. We'll move that one out as well to start defining the shape of this object. This one here we can duplicate and we do the front. Out a bit. Let's see where it is. Down a bit, and again we can scale it using your pivot. So um, the idea is you keep building these curves up, moving points, and building them to eventually get what I have here is a curve network. So here's the you know, the portion of the curves put together. They're not ideally positioned, um, but the tool is pretty robust but to build this, and it doesn't matter if the curves aren't exactly snapped together and still build pretty decent geometry. And all we're going to use for a lot of these curves is going to be the poly mesh by rail tool. So we have a network of curves here, and you can see I've modeled some detail into those that I had in the visual image, a little ridge here. And the idea is to go ahead and use the bi-rail tool to put these together. So this will locate on the poly mesh bi-rail, and all you do is you pick three curves, the curve, base curve, and then two rail curves, and it will generate the surface. If you don't like how the surface generator, there are different options you can play around with to make it cleaner if you need to, especially the curves as well. Ideally, you want to keep the curves as clean as possible, and these curves are as little lazy putting all the points in, same number of points makes it work a lot better. There's different options per span or absolute. And you can also rebuild the curves and make them a little cleaner, so I'm just going to take some of these curves. And there's different options you have under curve. There's a reparametize that you can make it non-uniform or uniform. So this can often help, you know, tweak some of the curves and make them look cleaner. And plus, you can add points to them. If you look at the number of points here and the number of points down here. You can see that the points aren't quite as even and there's a different number of points so we can add some points into any curve using the curve add point tool by CV and you can just middle mouse to add a point between so let's just do here as well so that's you know a few extra points and can help it build a nicer curve so we'll try that again Poly mesh by rail, we've got that one picked, so we'll just put these two, and that's even worse. So we'll just go back to the original one there. And ideally, the best way to make this work effectively is to actually go in, first of all, and take a curve and duplicate it. So if I actually took one of these curves, like this one here, 
and duplicated it and then moved it up and then kind of positioned that in and moved the points so it worked along with this other one. So I'll get that curve there so we can see. There it is, there it is. And we'll just rotate that down a bit. So we use the all pivot, get pivot in a good place. And then what we'll is straighten up some of the points by just moving these points around. So I'm going to use the move point tool itself, or I can actually tag points and use V to actually move them one at a time. And we're going to move some of these in a bit. get the best possible shape and again you want things to be pretty nice and smooth as well make sure that these last points are fairly well moved so instead of using this curve we'll delete that one we use this one instead and it should be a much nicer result let's see what we get Polymer spiral, and you can see that's much cleaner than it was before. It's still needs some tweaking, but it's much cleaner than before. And again, the options you've got absolute, it puts points based on number. So you, here you can actually dial down number of repetitions or per span that uses the number you already have in there. And that's normally the best result. Because they generate UVs, it's always a good idea to do. That would generate UVs so you don't have to texture map things from scratch when you go in and build each part. Let's build a few other sections. Build this section here. Same idea. With, actually, this time we can do it a different way. We can get this curve and by right along these two. So, poly mesh by rail. One. Two, and there's the next section done. And that came out very nicely. And using the similar curves, you can see how this will follow through. This section here is going to be a little bit more complicated. If we try to take this one and bi it between those two, it's not going to be too nice. We can try take this one and bi it between those two and see how that works. And we can give that, in this case, a few more spans. Then we do the front, and each of these we didn't actually specify a great UV, so we just pick each of those. You can go back, even enter and go back one, generate UVs, and generate UV. Let's just make sure we got that one. Generate UVs. Okay. And if you want to check it actually has UVs, you may want to just throw a texture map on these just check everything is looking good so you can quickly do that by going in and go to the material tab or the render tab and just modify material and just take the scene material itself and just on the form color just click an image and When you apply it, let's go to textures. You should see where the things actually have UVs or not. And you should be able to pick these one at a time. As you see, the UVs, and you can go here to UV. Oops, that's not very pretty. You can also see the UVs by just going in, 
to the view texturing UV text render and you should be able to see these have UVs on. Still a little stretch for some reason. This one hasn't. That one has. This one for some reason hasn't. So just one thing you can do again that seems to be work a bit quirky right now. This one's actually inverted right now, so in that case you just want to in the modeling tab, poly mesh, and there's this invert polygons. When you see it shaded like that, it means it's inverted. Just do the last few sections here. So we'll just go poly mesh, bi rail. In this case, we'll take this one here and we'll bi rail it between these two. Again, needs a few more subdivisions give it some of that curvature and again it's inverted so we'll just go poly mesh invert polygons to make sure it's the right way around this one here we can take this curve and by it between these two so again poly mesh by rail and take those two Again, it's inverted. So, and you'll keep working on this until you get all the parts together. This last section here, you can decide the best way of doing it. Again, I just do a. You can choose here either by rail between those two, but actually it works out quite well. I'm not worrying too much about. Um, it being even at this time, and I'll explain why in a second, because we're only going to build half of this and then mirror it across the other half using some of the other tools. So the next thing is kind of sticking the parts together um, that makes it easier some, in some areas of work. And you just put logical parts together wherever there's a seam, you'd leave it those separate. So in case here we want to put these parts together. So just take these three, these two sections here and you use a poly mesh merge and you can merge those together to make them now one piece. Then you can delete the original if you want. You could have transfer UVs across if you wanted to. And then delete the original. Again we can do it here as well. And I'm not going to worry about the UVs at this time. Just delete the original, but delete the history. Here as well, we can start putting these together. It works on closest distance, so if things aren't very well matched together, it may not merge for the first time. You may want to go and start kind of tweaking some points by using the move point tool and snapping to the closest point, just to make sure things merge together well when things are further apart. So in this case here, you can see how some of these aren't quite together. So I'm just going to go in here and just work snapping some points together. So it's just going to work a little cleaner when I get to the, the merge stage. And you can see here especially this point down. I really prefer that to be straight, so same idea here. Just going to tag a few points. Just going to move them back a little bit. I'm going to go to a wireframe view here. Bit to see slightly better what's going on. In this case, it's not quite close, so we're just going to move some of these points together. So I'm just going to pick this area here, move point, and just snap those in to get the detail 
Oh, I need to bring this out. Twisted. So that one. Let's just move there. That one to there. That one to there. And this bottom one, of course. And we could turn the curves off if it's getting complicated to see what you're doing. Just by in the display mode, just turn curves off and you can see if things are matching or not. Okay, so that's pretty good. So we'll just take these two here and we'll merge those. You can see the scene disappears, a blue line, and we can take. I guess we should have hidden the the merged one, so it's going to go to our explorer. Find the one we just did. There we go. Go to properties. Let's just delete the original, just so we don't have extra ones in here and then just pick those ones as well poly mesh merge so merge is a quick and easy tool to go and kind of put things together into single polygon shells of course we want to make this a full truck so we're just going to go to the front view pick both of these and just delete some of the polygons on one side by holding Y down and deleting half the geometry. And then we want to straighten this up, so I'm going to pick all those points and I want to scale them or move them so you can translate them in the X axis to zero and that will move them all, let's find zero in the X axis and move them all to align into the center. Now it's very simple to make this. Oops, I guess what happened was there, some of these came unmerged. So I'm just going to quickly check if I've got all the right pieces there. So I'll just quickly re merge it together. I may have to undo somewhere along the lines. Merge. Okay. So we've got two polygon shells here that make up the truck and we can pick this and use the poly mesh and there's another option here symmetrize polygons they will symmetrize either based on the local or global axis local is the object center if you build across the center of your world it will work fine either way and just go shaded you can see now this is starting to come together as the front of the truck. And we're not going to build the entire truck, we're going to work on this section here because it gives you the idea. Some of the areas you really want to kind of stretch out a bit you don't like. I don't like how this comes in very close down here. So I'm just going to move the point out. If you want to work in a symmetry mode, you can turn symmetry on here and set the symmetry. Let me just turn the snapping off symmetry to the right axis. So right now it's only not symmetrizing. So you just go here and pick whichever axis you want to do it. This will be the YZ. Yep, that's it. So we can see here now as I move points around, it'll move them on the other side at the same time. But it can actually definitely make my life a little bit easier. You can also see if we go in and smooth things by doing subdivision surface, just plus the numeric keypad, you can see how it smooths out the geometry. If you want to keep edges tighter, not go as rigid, you can undo that smooth, the object, and that would be minus, and you can add more detail in by using different one of your edge tools. So we'll just do a insert an edge around here, and you'll notice now when we go in and smooth it, it keeps 
a harder edge. That edge may have been a little bit too close, so we can move the edge up and down. Just pick the, oops, just pick an edge loop, E, or to middle mouse. Just move that down until we get the right level of detail and sharpness that we require. And it's really what you do, you go in, you extrude areas in for lights, you do edges, you smooth out and keep working with this until eventually you have a front of the entire truck built. And eventually it should look something along the lines of, let's open some of these scenes up. So we can see here some of the parts being built up here and merged together. Even here we extrude it in to create lights. And you can see here I've started adding the door and build section by section and extrude it in edges to create the wheel wheel so you can just go in and pick an edge and just use control D, duplicate the edge and extrude just like you'd extrude the face. go ahead now and add the wheel in. The easiest way to do this is just create a curve. We do a CV curve to profile the wheel. And we just start it. Actually, instead of building curve, we just do a primitive curve circle. And we just scale it down a bit. So it's roughly the size of the wheel. We just move that down to the wheel area. Of it, yeah. And then we just go into this view here and just start modeling that to make it more wheel like in its shape. So we just, well, it's a little bit square right now, so we just go in, start tagging some points, and make it more square than circle. Let's add some more there, see how these up. Just to kind of get this into the right shape. Take those. And these over here. Let's go those up a bit. Take these ones to the side. Bring those in a bit here. These two in a bit there. Scale these up a bit, and we we'll bring these two down a bit. Okay. So next of all, I want to make it a bit more interesting over here. So we're just going to pick just this curve, and there's an option here. If we do open close, so on the curve, open close. Let's get the curve first. <coughs> it's going to open and close one side. It may not be the side you want to open. So what you can actually do is there's the curve shift U. And you can pick where the curve starts. I just picked it here. And now I want to do curve open close, open close over here. And that's really what I want. I'm just going to delete this point as well. We don't need all the points around, especially for the inside of the wheel. Just take these two, scale them down a bit, and move them back a bit. So we'll just scale this back up a touch more. So that should be good for the inside of the wheel. Now we just need to go in and make this into a wheel shape. Make sure it's positioned correctly for the wheel and scaled as well. Move it up a bit more. That looks really good. And then we just go in and move the pivot. This will actually want to move the actual center of the object. So go to center mode and just move the center down. So in center mode we go to translate and we'll move the center to the center we want to use. That's 
to be about right. And now if you pick this and we do a poly mesh revolution around the axis, it should now revolve around a certain axis. Right now, I want to pick the local axis. I want to revolve it around the local x. And there we are. We'll just give it a few more subdivisions in the U. And here is our wheel. We can look at this and shade it. And we see it still needs a bit of work to make it more wheel like. So we'll just pick the curve. And it may be hard to get the curve straight off. So you can always change the sample here to just curve. And then when you pick it, over, you can pick the curve a lot easier. I'm just going to scale this curve. And then there's other scale that we can go now to. CUG and scale it to make the wheel a bit fatter and we can move it in a bit to get the right proportions or better proportions for the wheel. For the hot cap, same idea, we can go in and just create another revolution to build this section here. So we just go here, curve, draw curve by CV, and we just go from the center, and we just create. Well, this curve is pretty straight, but we can straighten it up later. So let's put the points in first, and then we'll straighten it later. Okay. So we just tag some points here and just scale them in the in this case the Z and we just do one point five whoops. So there's several ways to straighten things up. Um, we can scale them in the Z axis to zero and that's straightening them up. That's the easiest way to get them aligned. Again, we just do a move of the center. Yeah. This one's much easier. I can just pick the center point here and transform center to vertices. And that will actually move the center to the center of that object or the, where that vertex was selected. So the poly mesh revolve around axis. Again, we're going to do local. And it's going to be local in the X in this case, and we set this to again 2. A little bit of tweaking here to get this correct, but in this case, I'm just going to take this and scale it. And we just go COG so I can get that. And of course, we're going to move it because it's in the middle right now. And we can also see that right now it needs a bit more detail a couple of ways. First one needs to be inverters. So we'll just do poly mesh invert polygon. And next we'll go in and just go to its revolution. We can give it more access in this way as well. And then we can go in and move some points around to get some more detail. Yeah, so let's take that, move those out a bit, get some more curvature, and add these ones in here, and some move those as well. Make it a bit more interesting. So there we are, little wheel section. And you can keep going in again, adding more and more detail, so that's using a revolution tool that's another common tool to use. Of course extrude, another tool where you can use one curve and another curve. We could have built this wheel with an extrude tool instead if we want to. That's normally created for things like a pipe surfaces and you can see here on the object there's some surfaces that could be used for extrude. Such as 
such as you know the pipe coming here or this cable here coming down and those things you could use extrude for instead. So another good technique to use, you know, we talked about kind of mirroring this and working one side, um, and we're going to be adding more and more detail in, of course, um, radiator grills as well, so we're going to add that. But sometimes I see what's happening on the other side as well, and there are several ways to work with this. And one common technique is to kind of split in a half, and then using a clone, and then using the um, symmetrized polygon to see what's happening on the other side. We'll just do this top portion here to give you an example of that technique. So I'm just going to delete half the object. Our center is in the middle, and we can check that if we just go to one of the transform tools, we can see if we're not in COG, the center is located in the middle. If it's not, we want to make sure it is, or the object has been mirrored across. I'm going to take that object now and do a edit, duplicate, clone, single. And that will make a new object. I'm just going to move that object off to the side a bit and explain why I'm doing that because it's be easier to see the effect this way. And then we'll do a polygon mesh, symmetrized polygon. And this time we're going to set local and then it's symmetrized on the local axis, which that's not turned on. If I zoom out a bit, you'll see it's symmetrizing across the center. Now we can see that we have a symmetrized polygon, this entire object over here. Now if we start doing modeling changes, like start the building the radiator grill, and we're just going to go here, frame it there, get that one, frame that window here, so we can see two windows at the same. Just going to change this to hidden line. And we'll start modeling some more detail in here. So I'm going to use my insert edge. And we'll just do an edge loop here, and an edge loop down there, and an edge loop here. We'll pick some, let's see, we'll pick these polygons here. Hit Control D, duplicate them. We'll go in, move those in a bit. Okay, you can see there's a little gap there. So what we're going to do is just pick these polygons right there. It's just the small ones you can see actually if we move the camera around. Those are those ones, just delete those. That will get rid of that seam here. Yeah. We can kind of see what's going on. Just going to pick those again because it's pulling a little bit too far back. Moving forward a touch more. I want to make you know a slightly softer edge here, so we're just going to move some of these points around. Use the move tool, or we can tag in this case tag points and start moving them to start to get more of that grill shape. You can see that's now a bit more curved. You notice know, the curve is down a bit more there, so I move these three points and move them down a bit. One thing's going to need a bit more detail, so we're just going to split another edge and use that point to kind of use it to create some more resolution in the geometry to give us a bit more detail where we need it. And then anyway, we noticed there was a the radio bit on the outside, we can do that by going in and taking these portions here. Oops, we need to actually split it on the bottom there. Okay. So we're just again just moving some points around to get the the shape we need for this. And then what we're gonna do is extrude those out and then you know some smoothing effects we should get. So I'll move that out a bit. We want to make sure when you move these ones you move them straight. Anything on the board is straight up and down. 
we'll pick that third, we'll just pick the next one there, I'll just deselect that one in a second. You can just hold control and just toggle or control shift and deselect. Control D move out the touch and again you may find there's an extra little bit in the corner there so just I'll just hold Y down draw box over those delete those extra bits and there we have a bit more detail when we go in and start smoothing that you'll see we start to get some better details. Now there's a few denting areas in here, but of course we need to go in and add some more detail to make sure it doesn't look quite as ugly. But that's really the process of kind of adding more detail to parts. You can see how it did the entire section here quite nicely. When I've got the object how I want it, I can actually go in, take this object here, and just freeze it. Now right now if we look in the Explorer it has a little C next to it saying it's a clone. If you freeze it, it should disappear. If not you can duplicate it and then it will. Let's see if we delete this one. The freezing will actually get rid of a clone, it's still listing as a clone, so I'm just going to control D, standard duplicate and then delete this one here. That just gives it a C icon. Something that doesn't disappear. And then we can move it back into position. pretty good. Okay, so again, um, going in and creating more and more detail, building things up, the symmetry technique as well, and I'll show you that when we get to characters as well. Another nice thing is getting more shape, because it's very kind of flat right now, and I find it looks more like it would be nice if it bowed out. So I'm just going to pick all these pieces, excluding the wheel, I'm not going to pick any curves, I'm just going to turn curves off. Again, I pick all those three pieces. I'm going to create a lattice. Now, under the form, it says by lattice. But really, if you want to create a lattice, you have to do primitive lattice. That puts a lattice around the object, and you can use this to deform it. In this case, we're going to pick the points, just as we would normally, T. We can scale them. I'm just going to go COG, it's easier to get the right area and we'll just get up maybe in a little bit in the middle here. I want we want to bow out a bit in the center here to make it a more interesting shape. And you could have changed the number of lattice points. And I'm just going to sharpen that front as well by moving these forward a bit. And you can and we'll taper in a little bit at the end there. Same for the top, it would be nice if that top kind of bowed out a bit more. So we'll take these points there at the top. I mean a few more, but if we lift these up a bit, it will start to kind of bow out the top a little bit. And it would be nice if it bowed out more, not quite as evenly, so we'll just pick these ones as well, move those ones up, we give it again a bit more shape, and maybe the two side ones here, those ones here, and these ones here, we can move down a bit, and you can see how you can give things a little bit more shape if you needed to and this will of course affect the entire object and then when you're done with it 
you can pick these sections, freeze it, and then you can delete the lattice. If you don't freeze it, it will return back to its original shape. This actually needs to be moved over a uh, touch. There we go. So, um, lattices and deformers are great tools to go in and change the shape of objects. Last thing is I want to talk about is some of the nonlinear and the technique I just used before kind of explains um, how you can actually change objects and the history, but you can also reorganize the history a little bit as well. And we'll really cover that more in the character building section, but there's lots of things you can do when you're modeling to affect areas and then change things later on. So just be aware of that. And right now we're in uh, modeling construction mode, but you do have different construction modes. You can use it, especially with deformers. Um, for instance, um, one of the ones I use quite a lot is this relax and smooth deformer. Again, with characters, it's to show it a lot better, so I'm going to wait till I get the characters to really talk about that. But y the history can be used in some interesting ways to help you model and create more interesting objects. So after a few hours of work, um, after a day of work, I've got this entire cab built. But one thing it's lacking is textures and UVs. So even though I could have UV'd it as I went, but it would have been a smart way to work. In this case, I didn't. So if we look at a lot of these areas, they have um, under the view texturing texture that you see, none of these have any UVs or any texture on them at this time. So what I need to do is create textures and UVs for these. What I actually did instead of going through and UVing this bit by bit, I built a low res object. And this is our low res object. And it has already been UV, but we can talk about how I did UV this. You can use several techniques, like a series of planar, planar textures on it. And that's, or you can use, I started in this case with the cube map, and then there's some unwrapping of it. So we can see if we look at the window, so view, rendering texture editor, what I did was I took this object itself and I went in and did a basic kind of unwrap of half the object. Now this has been mirrored, so that's why I only got half sections. But we took areas and say project in here. It's not ideally UV, I actually thinking about this, I would have UV'd it all the way to the texture wrap down over here where it doesn't right now, there's actually a UV seam across the hood um, and down the sides. I would have actually done slightly differently if I redid it. Um, but really it's a matter of going in, I've got some new UVs just to show you, and then we can come back to this. So if we went here, let's go to the model, to the render tab, what's the material, we look at this and we look at the image on it right now you know, this was a new, we started in this case as well as a cubic so here's a cubic map and it looks pretty nice but we, we want to go in afterwards use the window so view texture texture editor, we can see that it's a bit of a mess, so what I actually started doing was pulling this apart out of the shells. And there's one of the selections here called Island Select, and that will, when you pick one point, it picks the entire island of it. And you can pull these apart. And the idea is you pick all the parts, and then, so there's a window, and you kind of lay them out how you'd like them to be. And you know, it takes some time, but you take all these apart and once you have everything laid out, you can start stitching stuff together. Let's get a few more parts here. 
and the stitching process this is you know the sides you can see here this back in that case I'm not going to worry about this right now let's see if we can get to find the roof somewhere here this is oops let's just let it sit for a second there let me oh yeah. um, this is the hood and what you can do is use some techniques to stitch stuff together so you can see here there's a few techniques and one of them I use quite a lot are these kind of in mud that we could be moving so but you've got these island heel to pick or island pick or island heel picked so in this case I do this one then we can pick that one here and you can see how it starts stitching stuff together and moving them around if you use my it's very similar to the movement show tool anyway after a bit you would get this together in this case since I already have that done I'm just going to delete that new text I just created. This is it. And maybe that's not the one I wanted. Let's see which one I wanted. Yeah, that's actually delete that. And that should put me back to where I was roughly originally and let me just make sure that texture is on the right coordinate so this one here oh, interesting undo that once more Let's see if we can switch that back over so I want to use Oh, that's interesting. It seems to replace that, so I'm just going to undo a few times until we get back to the, hopefully, the original texture. I have enough undos. I think that should be enough. Oh, way too many undos. Okay, but I had the scene already loaded, so I'll just reload the scene. Recent scenes. Anyway, so. Oops, this is a little bit done. So I'll just quickly change this quickly. Good. We're going to gate this, so I'm just quickly moving these gate operators. So I can just show you the process. This was the done one. And window. Like that. Like that gate operator. So I'm just leaving the gate operator here. Okay. And we quickly turn this back on. Okay, there we are, we're back where we were. And you know, okay, so we have this object here that's already been UV, and we have the original one. And the idea is you get these kind of lined up together, and then you just gate to it. So, what we're going to do is pick all the parts we want to get the texture. And the idea was instead of having texture, all these parts individually, I can just transfer texture from a low res one was much easier to UV to my high res one. So all we do now is we pick those objects and we add a property gator and we say this case transfer materials UVs and it works away for a second. Okay maybe to so pick that. Oh, so you do it two at a time. So I pick this one and that. I'll try it again. Property gator. Okay. Do it one time. So that's done. Now I pick this portion and then the low res. And hotkey again. Property 
beta. We can tear this off and transfer. Okay. And then the cab and the high res and again gator transfer materials. And that's pretty much it. Now this is hard to see everything, so we can take this low res one and we can change its display. So what you do is you go over here and we can go to little palette and we hit W, wireframe, click on here, nothing changes until you change the override off. Now we can see this outside one in wireframe. But we didn't do that front portion. Just turn that back to default. So we can do it and right mouse button get out of this mode when you're changing this place. Just go to this one as well. So pick this, followed by the low res and drop the gator transfer. Okay. Now say you don't like how some of the UVs are lined up, we can now take this one and shift these points around move this and you'll see as we move these points around it's actually editing the UVs this is great when you want to get things to fit properly you'll notice here sometimes you need to tweak to get the seam in the right place so instead of UV in the UV window UV a simple object you make sure it fits and I had to spend some time to get those windows to fit and kind of get areas not to stretch over some areas but overall I've got a pretty nice effect here. Now I don't really like how the UVs are in everywhere, but I can always clean this up once I've finished. Same idea, once you've done here, you can freeze the operators and then this will no longer be attached right now. You can see this low res object is attached. So if you went in and took all these objects and froze them, just with the freeze or freeze modeling now when you move this it will no longer affect the UVs and will be a lot faster so that's a quick way of UVing using Gator as well